Hello and welcome to Seekeress. On today's video, we have 10 tricky interview questions and how to answer them. Are you smarter than an interviewer? If you prepare properly, you will be. During a job interview, employers ask tricky questions to trip you up, not out of maliciousness, but to get an accurate sense of your candidacy. Interviewers know that you've probably practiced all of the traditional questions, so they try to stump you with trickier ones to get a better idea of your background, your communication skills, and how you'll perform should they offer you the job. Do keep in mind that there may not be a right or wrong answer for some of these questions. The interviewer will be more interested in how you respond to them and what your answer is. Now we bring you the 10 trickiest interview questions meant to trip you up with suggestions on how to answer them. Number 1. Are you the type who checks email during your vacation? The trap. This is a tricky one. On one hand, you want to frame yourself as someone who is dedicated to their work. At the same time, employers know that employee health and wellness is a key factor to continuous success and want to make sure you're smart about taking care of yourself even outside of the office. Burnout is a real thing. And no matter how durable you think you are, everyone is human and everyone needs a little rest sometimes. How to answer? Confirm your dedication to getting your job done, but also convey your understanding that personal well-being is key to professional success. Number 2. Is this position a similar role to any other jobs you are considering? The trap. Your interviewer may have two goals in mind here. They may be angling to uncover where else you are applying or may be trying to get a better idea of your past experiences and your future professional goals. This can be a good way for interviewers to get a sense of your strongest skills and determine if you'll actually be good fit for the job. How to answer? If you're applying for a variety of different positions, certainly don't name all of them. And don't name drop different companies. For one, you don't want your employer to think that your skills and interests are totally all over the place. Of course, it's good to have a wide range of different abilities, but it's most important to present yourself as the best fit for the specific job you're applying for. For example, if you're a writer who is also a project manager and you're interviewing for project management jobs, you wouldn't want to mention that you're also applying to writing jobs. Fortunately, this is the type of question where it's acceptable to give a general answer and then move on. Number 3. What's your biggest weakness? The trap. The first step to fixing a problem is admitting it. When employers ask this question, it's not just about figuring out your weaknesses, but also finding out whether or not you're aware of them and if you're intending to make changes. How to answer? Be modest. We all have weaknesses and it's okay to mention some parts of your skill set that need work, but give your weakness a silver lining and use your answer as an opportunity to highlight your strengths and underscore your determination to keep getting better. Question number four. If you could work for any company, where would you work? The trap. Your interviewer may be trying to figure out how invested you are in their company. In addition to determining where else you might be looking to apply, people sometimes have trouble answering this type of question because they can't decide if they should keep mum or mention something big name companies that they've interviewed with. How to answer? Don't mention any specific companies. Think about if you were on a date and their date asks if you could date anyone else in this restaurant, who would it be? If you asked your date that question, what would you want to hear? Emphasize how the company you're interviewing with is your top priority. Question number five. Why do you want to work here? The trap. Employers want to figure out if you've done your research about the company and whether you want this job rather than any old job. How to answer this question? Don't just say that you want to work there because there's free gym access, complimentary coffee, and a casual dress code. Make sure your answer has real meaning. Be enthusiastic in your answer and talk about how you connect with the company's core values, their mission, and the work they do. Then you can go into a little more detail about the specific position for which you're applying. Question number six. 
Where do you see yourself in five years? The trap. Employers don't want to invest in hiring, training and paying an employee who is not going to stick around and who is going to change career paths. Though it's becoming more and more common for people to spend less and less time at each job they hold, you certainly don't want to give your employer any doubts about your commitment to the role. How to answer? You don't have to profess that you absolutely see yourself with the same company. Instead, answer in a way that demonstrates your commitment to grow within your field. Employers want to hire employees who are self-motivated and who have an inner drive to better themselves and keep learning. But keep in mind that an employer may have follow-up with a question asking about specifics. So if possible, keep a few key tangible goals you'd like to accomplish. Question number seven. What do you think your references will say about you? The trap. Employers want to see if you're insecure about your references and if you'll volunteer any negative information about your prior experience or your ability to succeed in your role. How to answer? Simply put, don't fall for the trap, but do be modest. Under no circumstances should you offer up any negative information. Your references wouldn't have agreed to serve as references if they weren't willing to speak positively about you. Question number eight, which part of the job description sounds most challenging and why? The trap, are you really as experienced as you say you are? When it comes to a job description, there will likely be aspects that you can ace and aspects that will cause you some trouble. Employers want to know if your strengths align with your greatest needs. How to answer? A lie about your skills will come to haunt you later, so be honest. At the same time, use the answer as an opportunity to present yourself as a candidate who is always up for a challenge and who is sharpening your skills to keep up with the challenge. Question number nine. Tell me about your dream job. The trap. In many cases, passion breeds productivity. Dedication leads to success. Employers want to know just how invested you'll be in the role or if you see the job as a stopgap measure just to keep up some income while you hunt for something better. Along the same lines, employers want to know if you love the idea of the job or the job itself. Just because a job title sounds glamorous doesn't mean you love the day-to-day -day work. How to answer? Is the job you're applying for your dream job? If yes, then say so empathically. If your dream job is far-flung or far-fetched, it's probably best to not mention it. You want the employer to understand that you'll fully be invested in the position and not daydreaming about some other position while you're at your desk. If the job you're applying for is somewhere in between, you can tactfully frame your answer to convey that. Question number 10. Everyone has one exaggeration on their job application. What's yours? The trap. Will you fall for your interviewer's attempt to persuade you into admitting that's an exaggeration or a little white lie within your application? Hopefully not, and hopefully your cover letter or resume is free from any mistruths. It's never worth lying on your application. How to answer? Keep your cover letter and resume honest so you can be honest when you answer. So this was the entire video of 10 tricky interview questions and how to answer them.